Every drop of water tells a story of revival, growth, and beauty. Today we dive into the art of perfectly quenching your garden, ensuring every plant flourishes. Water is the lifeblood of the garden, a magical elixir that transforms seeds into vibrant blooms and lush foliage. It's a dance of nourishment, a delicate balance between too much and too little. It's about understanding the thirst of your plants and satisfying it in the most efficient way. Join us as we unlock the secrets of watering. From lush vegetable plots to elegant floral arrangements, every garden has a unique thirst to quench. Picture a symphony of foliage, with each plant playing a crucial role, each with its unique water rhythm. Can you hear the whisper of the ferns, the sigh of the roses, the chant of the tomatoes? They all sing, water us wisely. And now, you're at the conductor's podium, ready to orchestrate this symphony to perfection. Ready to delve into the science of watering? Let's go. Watering goes beyond just pouring water. It's a science that ensures your plants thrive. The joy of watering plants isn't just about the act itself, but understanding the science behind it. Let's start with soil moisture levels. Soil is like a sponge. It can absorb and hold water. When you water your garden, you're not just giving water to the plants, but also replenishing the soil's water reserves. Think of it this way. When you're thirsty, you don't just sip enough water to wet your lips, you drink enough to quench your thirst. Similarly, plants need a good soak that reaches the depth of their roots. Now let's talk about roots. The roots are the lifelines of plants, drawing up water and nutrients from the soil. A good watering encourages roots to grow deeper into the soil, making the plant more resilient and less reliant on frequent watering. So, every time you water, you're not just quenching the plant's thirst but also encouraging the roots to explore further into the soil. However, keep in mind like anything else in life, balance is key. Overwatering and underwatering both have their consequences. Overwatering can lead to waterlogged soil and root rot, which can suffocate the roots and eventually kill the plant. On the other hand, underwatering can lead to dry soil and root shrinkage, which can stress the plant and stunt its growth. The trick is to find that sweet spot where the soil is moist, but not waterlogged, and the roots are hydrated, but not drowning. A good rule of thumb is to water deeply and less frequently. This promotes deep root growth and helps plants withstand dry spells. Remember every plant is unique and so are its watering needs. Some plants like succulents and cacti prefer dry soil, while others like ferns and hostas prefer moist soil. So it's important to know your plants and their watering needs. Now that we understand the science, how do we put it into practice? From your fingertips to high-tech gadgets, let's explore the tools that can help us water wisely. The first step in this journey begins not with a tool, but with your own hand. Assessing soil moisture manually is a simple yet crucial technique. Just dig a small hole, about 2 inches deep, and feel the soil. If it's dry and crumbly, your plants are thirsty. If it's moist, you can wait a bit before watering. Moving on to our tools, let's start with the humble watering can. It's perfect for small gardens or indoor plants, offering controlled watering directly to the roots. However, for larger gardens, a watering can might not be the most efficient tool. Next, we have hose attachments. These come in a variety of styles, from fan sprayers to soaker hoses, each with its unique benefits. Fan sprayers are great for delicate plants, while soaker hoses ensure deep watering, ideal for established plants and trees. Drip systems are another wonderful option, especially for vegetable gardens or flower beds. They deliver water directly to the roots, minimizing evaporation and water waste, but they do require a bit more setup and maintenance. And lastly, for the ultimate convenience, there's the automated sprinkler system. It's a time saver, and with timers and sensors, it can provide consistent watering. But remember, while it's automated, it's not a set and forget system. Periodic checks are essential to ensure everything's working as it should. So, whether you're using a watering can or an automated system, remember that the key is to water deeply and infrequently. This encourages plants to grow deep roots, making them more resilient and drought-resistant, but when is the best time to water? Let's find out. Did you know that the timing of watering can significantly affect plant health? It's a dance between the sun and your watering can, a delicate balance that can make all the difference. Picture this. As dawn breaks, the world is fresh and cool. This is the optimal time to water your garden. The water seeps into the soil, quenching the thirst of the roots without risk of quick evaporation. As the sun climbs higher, midday heat intensifies. Watering at this time? Not the best idea. The scorching sun can cause water to evaporate before it even reaches the roots. 
Plus, water droplets on leaves can act like mini magnifying glasses, potentially scorching your plants. And as dusk settles, the world cools again, making it another good time to water. But remember, watering late at night can leave your plants soggy till morning, promoting diseases. So, it's all about timing, folks. What about when it rains? Can we make the most of that? Embrace the rain. With rainwater harvesting, you can ensure your garden never goes thirsty. This sustainable practice not only quenches your garden's thirst, but also contributes to a greener planet by making the most of nature's giving. Rainwater is naturally soft and free of minerals, chlorine, and other chemicals found in city water making it a healthier choice for your plants. Imagine this. A simple DIY setup using barrels. Sounds intriguing, doesn't it? Here's how it works. When it rains, the water is collected in these barrels, stored for future use. The stored rainwater can then be used to water your garden during dry spells, ensuring your plants stay lush and vibrant. This method is not only cost-effective but also reduces our dependence on municipal water, promoting self-sufficiency. Plus, your plants will love the natural untreated water. But how can we tell if we're watering just right or too much? Recognizing the signs of overwatering and underwatering can save your garden from unnecessary stress. When plants are overwatered, they may display symptoms like yellowing leaves, wilting, or even root rot. This happens because too much water drowns the roots, depriving them of the oxygen they need to thrive. On the other hand, underwatering can cause plants to dry out, leading to browning leaves, stunted growth, and in severe cases, plant death. The soil may also feel dry to the touch, and the plant may lose its elasticity, failing to spring back when touched. Sometimes these signs can be confusing as they can appear similar, but with keen observation and a little practice, you'll soon be able to distinguish between the two. Remember, each plant is unique, and what works for one may not work for another. Watering isn't a one-size-fits-all practice. Let's take a look at how it's done around the world. From the arid deserts to the tropical rainforests, gardeners have adapted their watering techniques to suit their environment. Let's take a quick trip around the globe to see how this is done. In the arid regions of the Middle East, we find the ancient practice of dew gardening. Here, gardeners plant at night to capture the precious dew that forms by morning. Over in the lush landscapes of Asia, gardeners harness the monsoon rains, storing the surplus for drier months. Meanwhile, in the Mediterranean, dry gardening is a technique used to cultivate plants that thrive with minimal water. And let's not forget the ingenious cloud harvesting in South America, where fog is trapped and condensed into water for plants. From these examples we see that watering is an art, finely tuned to the rhythm of nature and the unique demands of the local climate. Now that we've learned so much, it's time to put our knowledge into action. Your garden is waiting. It's time to experiment with your watering strategies. Think about the science, the tools, the timing and even the sun. Consider how you can harness the rain to quench your garden's thirst. Watch for signs of overwatering and underwatering. Learn from gardeners around the globe, but most importantly observe the transformation that thoughtful watering can bring. The magic is in your hands, so go on, quench your garden's thirst and witness its revival. Transform your garden into a watering wonder today.